Welcome to Higher Definition, a web show dedicated to the analysis, discussion, and mockery of the movies I like, because it is my show and not yours. We are dressed up to celebrate our two favorite parties of the year, Halloween and Dia de los Muertos. My name is Benito Camela Huesuda. And my name is Catherine Avercamp Osanto. And we are going to make a list of our favorite movies in these scary days. Wow. The list is very big because we are very fond of horror movies. But for the moment we will talk about three movies. Maybe they are not the scariest, but these are the three films that are not missing in our dark meetings with family and friends. You don't know this, but Mrs. Avercamp Osanto is Dutch. Therefore, she never celebrates Halloween and much less the Day of the Dead. What a change! Well, I must confess, my dears, about 10 years ago, I met this little faggot who celebrated Halloween and Day of the Dead. And, well, immediately I fell in love with these colorful celebrations and became a great fan. Well, let's start with our list, shall we? With two movies family appropriated. Who has not seen Coco at this point and what else can be said about Coco that has not been said already? This is the story of a Mexican boy who visits the world of the dead in order to become a musician, a gift that is part of his family legacy. When Mexicans found out that Disney wanted to make a movie about the day of the dead, we went mad! Especially when we knew that Disney wanted to make the name Day of the Dead, Día de los Muertos, a copyrighted property. What a ghastly idea. Disgusting. In the end, they did not do it. And Mexicans were so impressed by Coco that the movie turned out to be the most successful movie in Mexican history. The love that Mexicans feel for Coco is so undeniable that even the Mexicans living abroad promote the film as if it were part of our cultural legacy and use it to educate foreigners about this Mexican tradition almost as important as Christmas in our culture. The movie is spotless. Foreigners' eyes may find out colorful, but Mexican eyes can find so many details about Mexico. Its culture, its history, buildings, movie stars, sayings, even the inclusion of La Llorona, a song dedicated to the death. No sé que tiene las flores llorona, las flores del campo santo. Or the use of la chancla as an instrument of power by Mexican mother. Everything is correct. But I love this story because as Miguel in Coco, this film reminds me of my recently departed grandmother. The person who taught me the importance and magic of the Mexican Day of the Dead. So obviously at the end of the movie I could not help crying and crying for hours. And every time I hear the song, remember me, remember me, remember me. Even to this day, it still made me feel sad. And if my new system is down, I can't stop but crying again. Winner of the Oscars for the best animated film in 2017 and the best song. In a year full with excellent songs, Coco and Remember Me are today the new classic of the season. Yeah, the, new the original Halloween classic and the magic fantasy of many since 1993. This movie is great because it is full of witches, vampires, werewolves, ghosts and all kinds of monsters. And yet it is harmless. There is a great controversy about whether it is a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie. But because I am dark, I feel it more like a Halloween movie. And to be honest, the song This is Halloween is a song that I repeat again and again since the very first day of October. I resent the spooky darkness of shortening days, but the jack-o'-lanterns and scarecrows and guns not only look great on grim autumn nights, but also bring joy and light into that darkness. And we need a Tim Burton to show us that creepy can be adorable. In case you don't know, this movie is based on a poem by Tim Burton that he wrote when he watched how the decoration of Halloween was replaced by the Christmas decoration in a shopping mall. And that is what the film reflects. The clash between two parties, 
so different and so close to each other. The animation technique is just amazing. It can be said that it is an atypical work of art that took more than three years to be recorded because the characters are made of clay and to be able to record one second of the film it was necessary to take 24 photographs with different movies. And we are talking about like before computing technology, you know, so this was the way of achieving such a movie. This means that one minute of film is composed of 1440 photos and only the song This is Halloween needed 4435 photos. The movie has a 76 minutes length, so you can do the numbers. That's called mathematics. I must do admit that I am in love not only with Jack, but also with Sally's character, a zombie doll stuffed with dry leaves that shudders and so it wounds along in the dark while singing a very sad love song. And Sally's song is my other favorite song of the movie. And this song I started playing since September, especially Amy Lee's version, the, the version from the singer of the group Evanescence. Obviously, the star of the movie is Jack. I like Jack because he's a loser. What are you saying? No, I mean it. He's a loser. He is the king of Halloween, but he is already bored of doing the same thing again and again and again, so he needed a challenge. And that feeling of dissatisfaction is something that many people can identify with. Unfortunately, Jack fails in his attempt to become the new Santa Claus. And I love that Jack fails because in many movies the hero always wins. And this is not the case in real life. It is time to teach children that we do not always get what we want. But thanks to this failure, Jack learned to accept himself. Just as he is good for some things and bad for other things. In other words, he accepts his limit, something that many of us should learn to be happy. And even happier if you find someone who loves you as you are with your virtues, but also with your flaws. Just like Sally loves Jack. Ultimately, Nightmare Before Christmas is a twisted love story where a broken one meets the incomplete one, teaching us that even in the darkest of places, one can be happy. Happy, happy Halloween. Happy Dia de los Muertos. Bye. Hola. Si te gustan mis análisis sobre películas y quieres más chacoteo cinematográfico, dale click a este enlace. Si quieres conocer más sobre mi canal, dale click a este otro enlace. Y si quieres recibir todas las críticas recién saliditas del horno, suscríbete al canal. Y no se te olvide comentar el video, darle like y en el mejor de los casos compartir. No cuesta nada y motiva muchísimo.